Have you ever been somewhere with a friend and you're just like, yo, want to play some Pong? So then you look for an app and then you find absolutely nothing. <gasps> well, then you're a little weird, not going to lie. There's so many videos out there where people make a game in one hour and there's like zero about making a game in two hours. So I figured, hey, why not make a video on it? Yeah, it's totally not because I ran out of time while trying to make a game in an hour. All right, without further ado, let's get right into it. It's 11 a.m. so my time has officially started. I only have two hours so I have to keep things relatively simple. And there is nothing more simple than Pong. But see, everybody's already played Pong so I have to put a little twist on it to make it actually fun for people to play. I settled on making a local multiplayer version of Pong where two people use the same phone and compete against each other. I've learned a lot about mobile games in the past week as my friend and I are working on one right now. So this shouldn't be too difficult. The first thing I did was create an input manager, which will detect which quadrants are being pressed by the players. As an example, if I'm pressing the top left quadrant, player 1 should move up. The input manager also takes into account the fact that there may be multiple touches on the screen at once, which Unity makes pretty easy. I know you can't see the phone with this clip, but trust me, it works. I then made a script that was assigned two quadrants, one for moving up and one for moving down. I then used the input manager to figure out if those quadrants were being pressed, and if they were, I moved the paddle. Yeah, I know we're both asking the same question right now. Why do they call it a paddle? They literally look nothing alike. I mean, that's like saying this Wii Remote and this water bottle are the same thing. Kinda whack if you ask me. Next, I added a ball and then made it bounce everywhere because that's pretty cool. And with that, we kinda have ourselves some Pong. But after playing for a little while, I noticed some stuff that really began to bother me. First off, it's super boring when the ball just stays at the same speed the whole game. So I wrote a script that would make the ball gain velocity every time it hits something. And I'm really proud of what I've done. Not just this script, but the whole ball in general. It's gotten to the point where anything I tell it to do, it will immediately do without any imperfections. See, look. Hey ball, stay inside the playing area. And as you can see, it works perfectly. Hey wait, hold on, where's it going? Okay, after fixing that, I polished some things, added a trail to the ball, and added some post-processing to the game, and now it looks a lot better. It's currently 1pm, and the game's in a playable state, so now I can say that I made it in 2 hours. But this video is only 3 minutes long, so I'm gonna work some more just to get some more content. To start, I added some camera shake, because not gonna lie, camera shake's pretty cool, and it really juices up the game. To juice up the game even more, I added some bounce particles, which look really cool in my opinion. I then used my incredible art skills to draw two rectangles in Photoshop and call it a pause button. Then I slapped that into Unity, did some programming, and managed to stick this epic pause menu together. Yeah, pretty cool, I know. Oh wow, what a great channel. Gee, that subscribe button looks really tempting. I guess I'll click it. Honestly, that guy was pretty right. I don't know who he is or anything, but like... I mean, he's right. Yeah, slap a comment down below if you know who he is, because I totally don't. Okay, <laughs> time for some sound effects, because without them, it's kind of just like empty and bad. And because I'm a professional sound designer with millions of tools at my disposal, I'm... I'm gonna use BFXR. If you don't know what BFXR is, it's actually really, really cool. First off, if you've heard of SFXR, it's kind of the same thing, just like improved on a lot. BFXR is just a really intuitive way to create sounds. You really just go all willy nilly with these buttons and you get these like retro sounding things. I'll leave a link in the description. Oh, and it's free. Anyway, let's start making some sounds. Uh, hit. Sick. Okay, next sound. Wait, that that's literally all I need. Alright, now that I have all my sound effects, I'm gonna steal a sound manager script that I made for another game. And with some slight adjustments to my code, we now have this bouncing sound... thing. Okay, on second thought, this needs more than just one sound effect. Um... Coin. Programming. Errors in the console. Wait. Okay, now when a player scores, you'll hear a little sound and it's pretty cool. Next, sound. This one will be the sound for selecting buttons and such. Sick. Alright, the final sound effect I have to implement is launching the ball. Very cool. Okay, so do you remember when I said that I wanted to add sound effects because everything was feeling kind of empty? Well, it still feels pretty empty, so I'm going to try and make a song in FL Studio. And I know some of you are probably wondering, 
Nate, isn't that really expensive? Yes, it is. And because I'm such a successful game developer and YouTuber, I make enough money to support myself and buy expensive things. Hey, wait, quick, stop the recording. Don't show them that stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna make this song now. Okay, the song's done, and it's in the game now. And when I'm done talking, I'll play it for you. But yeah, that's all I've got for today. So hit like if you liked, also hit like if you disliked, and hit subscribe too. All right, boys and girls, have a great day, and... Yeah, just have a great day.